With this, we come to the next presentation. May I please request Shri H K Raghu, E D, U T and H S R, R D S O, to please join us on stage. Can we please welcome Mr. Raghu on stage, everyone? Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Till now, since yesterday, we are listening lot of jargons, and all the jargons which I noted down. In those jargons, you will find carbon footprint, ropeways, metro news, metro light. then comes super escada head hardened drills platform screen doors ecosystem atnirbhar bharat globally competitive neo and light version quality scale and size hyper loops then someone from the industry says best technology right technology right time then the new version innovation then self retrospection realization of atmanirbhar bharat capex last mile connectivity health care reduce pollution etcs level 2 pollution levels railways spvs automobile global manufacturing hub 75 billion us dollars fortune 500 companies completing with the world class quality make in india ease of doing business and now in the morning sustainability smart cities and carbon footprint so i think it is enough for all of you that you have already listened lot of jargons here i am not to tell you any jargon i will concentrate only why we are so much worried about to justify metro systems whether we should be worried about to justify the metro system either financially or we should directly go for it so my full presentation will be based on the things which self justify the metro system somebody says that metro systems are very costly and once they compare the cost it is not the life cycle cost but they compare the cost for a very short period and when they compare the cost they compare with the transport but there are some hidden cost which you have to pay if you do not go for the metro system so let me just start the topic is why justify metros this is normal metro system you see i am hk raghu executive director from urban transport and high speed rds to lucknow my paper is based on the international journal studies published in october 2017 but it has come to my knowledge only recently now how we select the technology
we think for long lasting technology it has to be energy efficient or effective it needs to be self reliant it should be eco friendly till now you have listened the jargon of carbon footprint i am introducing a new word which is known as low micro plastics till now all the studies has concentrated on low carbon footprint my presentation will be on low micro plastics then somebody says sustainability and the question was asked we didn't get a real answer which we are looking for then our technology has to be acceptability to the common man it needs to be cost effective low maintenance cost then finally the availability of fund and the political will so these are the various modes of transportation in a city you are all aware about it few other mode of transportation you already know now i will divide transportation in two different portion first portion is road and rubber tires and road can be asphalt or it can be cement you know two wheelers you know three wheelers you know four wheelers and finally the new system is electrical buses and electrical trucks the next system is railroad and steel tire this is indian railways metro rail and metro light dedicated freight corridor now the question comes why avoid personal vehicle this is the chart which shows if we use the personal vehicle for carrying 50 people how much road you occupy the first one is 50 pedestrian second you see 50 cyclist third you see 50 people in a bus and finally you see the 50 people in individual cars this is the comparison of space we occupy if we go for 50000 people and only travel by car we require 175 wide road used by the cars and there is no space for any greenery or tree again if you go for the buses it occupies about 35 meter wide road and you find some little of greenery but if you go for metros it requires only 9 meter wide place and lot of greenery now coming to the pollution once we look at a vehicle as a pollute polluting object this is basically we are concentrating on exhaust pollution but there is one more thing this is non exhaust pollution if you see this diagram from this diagram you will come to know that exhaust pollution by driving a car and non exhaust pollution by driving a car and the pie chart which shows you 
that the total exhaust pollution is only 14%, whereas the non-exhaust pollution is 86%. Now coming to why eliminate rubber tires. Tires are basically plastic polluters. What are the environmental hazard? If you see the global production of thermoplastics in 2015 is about 322 million tons. Out of this total production by 2010, 12.7 million tons has gone into the ocean. Pollution of environment with the plastic is recognized as a serious global threat because it can neg negatively affect human health, aquatic organism, as well as the economy. Tire wear and tear is a slithy source of microplastics in our environment, which can only be addressed effectively if awareness increases. Knowledge gaps on quantities and effective are being closed and creative technical solutions are being sought. Now you see the raw material which is used in the tire is basically natural rubber and some crude oil. Tires are basically made of Natural rubber 19%, synthetic rubber 24% and it consumes about 7 gallon of oil for one set of car tire. And if you go for a truck, it consumes 22 gallons for producing truck tire. Producing Tires still has monumental environmental effect. One is deforestation and second is climate harming fossil fuel used to make synthetic rubbers. But what's also become increasingly clear that as the rubber wears and tears, it throw off tiny particles, polymers that often end up as pollutants in the ocean and waterways. Now coming to the non-exhaust emission, this is the chart which shows that a small car, medium car, large car, tire wear, and then the brake wear, then the road wear. It is basically divided in three different zones. One zone is PM10, second zone is PM2.5 to 10, and third zone is PM 2.5 and less. So you will find that the lowest portion shows the PM 2.5 micron particles, which are the major health hazard. On an average, it emission is PM 2.5 is 5 milligram per kilometer. Then you see the tire dumps. This is the satellite picture taken over the Saudi Arabia. And you see, it can be seen from the satellite, the tire dumps. But if you go very near to it, you will find these are the tire dumps. Then you burn the tire mass, which again pollutes the environment. The story of rubber tire we should know. In 1839, Charles Goodyear developed the process that makes natural rubber more flexible and durable, that is vulcanization. In 
In 1888, John Dunlop invented the air-filled pneumatic tire for bicycles. In 1911, Philip Strauss invented the first successful car tire. Modern tires are made of synthetic rubber, wire, plastic, based fabric and other materials. Tire wear generation skill. As per the report of 2013, about 2.5 pound of rubber is lost as a tire wear during its service life of a tire, considering 6.33 years. Cole study says that in US alone, produces about 1.8 million tons of microplastic each year. Once the tire particles have made into reverse erosion, they can affect noticeable effect on the marine life. John Winston at the Citadel exposed shrimps. Seafood hote na shrimps, jisko aap log khate. Usko unhone practical lab mein dala aur usme माइक्रो पार्टिकल्स डाला तो दीज माइक्रो पार्टिकल्स जो थे वो उसका गिल में फंस जाते हैं और उसकी डेथ हो जाती है और जब उसके गिल में नहीं फंसते हैं जिसको नजेस्ट कर लेता है वो वो उसके गट्स में एक जगह इकट्ठा हो जाते हैं बट जब आप उसको खाते हैं तो कोई उसको ज़्यादा प्रोसेस करके नहीं खाते हैं सीधा फ्राई करते हैं और सीधा मुँह में डालते हैं तो इट गोज इन टू योर स्टमक Estimated pollution. This study is based on basically three different roads: urban roads, rural roads, and highways. The capturing of wear and tear in the pores of very open asphalt concrete was taken into consideration. The total estimate amount of wear and tear for the three roads type was seventeen thousand. 300 tons per year. If we take about 95% capturing in the very open asphalt concrete into consideration and subtract this from the 17,300 tons per year, we end up with 8,900 tons per year that is released in the environment. Now coming to tire wear dust emission worldwide. This study has been taken on 13 countries. So first four countries which you can consider as a greener countries are shown here: Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, which creates less than one percent of pollution if we consider all full world pollution. Then second slot comes Germany, United Kingdom, Italy, and Japan, which creates less than five percent of the pollution. Now coming to our beloved India and Brazil, they are five point nine seven percent and six percent, and the worst polluters are China, USA, and Australia. Normally, people are sending their kids to study in Australia, or they want to migrate and live in Australia. But the Australia is the one country which contribute about 36.69 percent of the total particle pollution in the world. If we consider total about 4,900,000 tons per year emission is there. Number of vehicles on the road. This chart simply shows how we are increasing from 1940 to 2020 year. Pollution cycle. Once the car drives on the road, about 1,040 tons of the dust, tire dust, goes into air. which is inhaled by the human being 
and the remaining part remains in the asphalt but when the rain comes it goes into river and one is go into river or water body the marine uh, lives can take that and finally you consume that marine drive so finally you find a man which is totally black black means full of tire pollutants now coming to pm 2.5 particles pm 2.5 particles that is particles whose size is less than 2.5 micron cannot be filtered by a normal mask which you are wearing it is just like corona even if you wear a mask there are chances that it will enter you and once it is released into air it remains in the air for days and weeks and travel more than a thousand kilometer so if you are thinking i am sitting in delhi and somebody sitting in a village is not affected this is not correct if you are polluting delhi then the nearby villages are also affected the contribution of tire wear and tear to air mon pm10 has been estimated in several studies mostly focusing on qualifying the contribution of non exhaust pm emission related to exhaust pm emission based on the data several european countries estimated 50 to 85% of the total traffic pm10 emission originate from the non exhaust sources the large variation is due to factors such as degree of participation precipitation road surface characteristics type of tire the wear and tear is typically expected to contribute least of the non exhaust sources now coming to the health effect ultimately humans and ecosystem can be exposed to the tire and wear and tear released into the environment for human the most relevant exposure route is inhalation from the airborne particles marine and other aquatic organism may be exposed to the tire wear and tear many of these organisms like mussels and oysters are important commercial seafood and the question arises whether the human health may be at risk due to consumption of polluted seafood these human health issues are discussed in more detail below now dash due to air pollution global burden of disease study 2015 says about 4.2 million people were affected from the airborne particulates 30.7% of death in india can be attributed attributed to the air pollution that means about 2.5 million people die every year these are the deaths in india due to air pollution starting from 1990 it started from 13.33 lakh person above 14 year of age then by 2019 it became 16.67 health effect from inhalation it is basically responsible for about 3 million deaths globally in the year 2012 this suggests that the tire wear and tear may contribute to globally health burden due to air pollution while calculating the uh, justification for metro we do not calculate the health cost which we are paying if metros are not there this we can take into account while justifying the metros however unambiguous conclusion cannot be drawn since it is yet not known what component in pm 2.5 contribute most to its detrimental effect this stresses the urgency of identifying these components 
Now the health effect on food intake. Coming to the mitigation measures. The first thing we think of the recycling of the thing. But once you promote the recycling of any waste, you are not controlling the production of that thing. People keep on producing the tires till you keep on recycling them. Second, this chart shows to you that in 1990, total about 1,000 million tires were produced. And by 2017, this has reduced to 60 million. But it is again ambiguous. Because you have started the retrading of tire job. So finally, the total number of tire on the roads are not reduced. As much as 28% of microplastic in the ocean comes from the tire shedding. The first thing we understand whenever we are in the problem, we want to justify something that we should devise something. So first thing is wear resistance tire. When we go for wear resistance tire, we know there is a concept of magical triangle. This magic triangle is the relationship between the rolling resistance, slip resistance and the wear resistance. If you improve one, the another will increase. So improved wear resistance would thus result in a poorer rolling resistance and slip resistance. This means that compromises the sort between fuel consumption, safety and durability. Second option, you are thinking about the electrical vehicles. It can be concluded that the current electrical cars will not solve the particulate matter problem. This will reduce PM10 problem by eliminating exhaust emission. But at the same time, they will increase the problem by increased emission of tire wear and tear due to its more weight. All electrical cars are heavier than the petrol and diesel cars. Now you see what, what electrical cars generate. This is the generation of a scrap of batteries and there is no mitigation measure for it. Either you have to throw it in the ocean or you have to take some observance which will further pollute the air. Next option comes as self-driving cars. What are the advantages of self-driving cars? Self-driving car can be programmed to reduce wear and tear. Examples include quiet acceleration, taking bend slowly, and improve anticipation to traffic circumstances, resulting into fewer instances of breaking event. इससे आप क्या रिड्यूस कर रहे हैं जो ब्रेक वियर से आपका पोल्यूशन होता है उसको रिड्यूस कर रहे हैं इफ ऑल कार्स वुड कंप्यूटर ड्रिवेन ड्राइविंग कुड बिकम मोर इंस्टिंगली सेफ इट विल बी मोर सेफ दिस कुड ऑल्टर द बैलेंस ऑफ द मैजिक ट्राइंगल बिटवीन रोलिंग रेजिस्टेंस स्लिपिंग रेजिस्टेंस इन द वियर रेजिस्टेंस resulting in a higher priority for wear resistance and thus less wear and tear. Now coming to whatever has gone into the sewage and you have to have a sewage treatment plant. These sewage treatment plants are very very costly because the amount of water you generate through the roads it is very very high. So that is going to increase the overall cost.
कलेक्शन ऑफ रन ऑफ एंड टेम्पररी स्टोरेज इन ए सेडिमेंटेशन बेसिन कूड ऑलरेडी सब्सटेंसली रिड्यूस द लोड पार्टिकुलेट टू द लार्ज पार्टिकल्स नाउ कमिंग नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन यू शुड हैव ओपन एसफॉल्ट रोड द पेमेंट मटेरियल इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर एंटायर वियर एंड टीयर द पेमेंट कुड बी डिजाइन टू रिड्यूस वियर designing road using very open asphalt concrete could reduce emission while catching the coarse part of the tire wear coarse part means which, which is more than pm10 which is not very harmful for the health of a human being now the conclusion it can be concluded that the tire wear and tear is a slithy source of microplastics in the environment this can only be addressed effectively if awareness increases knowledge gaps are being closed and creative solutions are being sought this requires a global effort from all stakeholders consumers regulators industries and research alike so what we have seen we have already seen various means of transportation we have seen the advantage therefore now we decide to go for metros thank you very much thank you so much sir for sharing the insights may i please request mr atul vashishtha branding department jindal steel and power limited to please join us on stage can we please have mr atul vashishtha on stage from jindal steel and power limited question sir sir in fact uh, most of the participants they are more scared to ask you questions so that is why i think the people are not asking any question from you no no by, by within two days of uh, interacting with all of you i have created more friends than the enemies <laughs> so <laughs> i am quite uh, clear that there will be some questions on my presentation also and nobody is perfect i have only tried to explain the thing what are the facts and you must know in fact sir, it was really good presentation in one of the slides you have told that the Uh, particulate matter with the 2.5 size is more dangerous and if it is a pm is a 10 it is not so dangerous and you have also mentioned in one of the slides that 2.5 particle can travel for weeks or for it they can also travel more than 1000 kilometers so my question is in those countries where the particular size 2.5 is more from the last 1000 years whether these particles has not uh, reached any corner of the world why in, in a particular country uh, there is a, a more 2.5 particles now it is it is basically depend upon the traffic how much traffic you generate because when i say it remains in the air for weeks days and weeks and it can travel up to thousand of kilometer but before that it affects your country country more and affects the neighboring countries also provided they are having the common boundary with you but in between if sea comes then the chances of rain is there which almost daily in coastal area so it goes into sea 
the maximum 2.5 pm particles goes into sea and that affect your marine life but till it remains suspended in the air due to inhalation of this air you are directly affected suppose if there is no sea nearby the countries then whether they have traveled more than 1000 yes, km yes 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 it can travel just like the corona come from china all over world the corona was also tiny particles like uh, less than 2.5 pm so it travels through the world because you think that you are not carrying that particles the main main danger of this particle is that it is not visible to you whatever things are visible to you you can take protection about it say if suddenly in this room some smoke starts either you will run off from the smoke or you will start wearing mask but if nothing is visible to you and there is no smell how you can take care of it so it will finally you will inhale that thing inside you and it is going to affect your lungs in the same way as corona has affected you and you know what the word figure says the word figure says whatever the total number of death due to corona is only basically those people who were already having such kind of diseases which are related to your uh, lung diseases or they are having some other element like heart element or so and so the worst part of this pm 2.5 is that once you inhale into your lungs some of the particles remains in your lung and they will clog the lung so that your oxygen intake reduces but there may be some particles which goes into your blood and then finally they can lead to heart attack also so you have to go through that paper this paper is very vast and very debatable thing because the people who are in the business of producing car and tires they are going against it but we as an indian we have to think whether we have to go for the personal cars or for the uh, buses or for metros you may have the question that metros are not uh um, means uh, giving me the services from home to home point to point yes there is a reason but tomorrow if somebody announces that i am going to open aims in every state at the cost of say 30000 rupees per aims that is for what for treating you people who are already having such kind of diseases and the whatever number of death i have already told you before the person die he remain in the hospital for a very long time so you have to you are increasing basically the medical expenses which you are not considering while uh, while you promote the metro or while you are making your dpr of metro all the dpr made as on date till date the last dpr which i have seen of messrs k ride of bangalore is basically false they are giving the impression that you are creating about 14% return no it is just not possible even delhi metro has not come up to that position so it can gives you 14% return and you know why you are enjoying for so many days so many days you were enjoying delhi metro just because the person who has given you the loan has not asked you give back the loan and the lean period has expired in the 2020 when the corona period was there and delhi metro has asked government of india to give a release package of 38000 crores of rupees to repay the loan then government of india has raised his hand sorry i cannot do the next option is that the person who has given you the loan will take away your metros will take away your ports will take away of your and you may land up in the situation as the south african countries has landed up and because lot of loan has been taken to create infrastructure so creating infrastructure at a very fast rate for which you don't have money i think it is not advisable we should go at the pace at which we can sustain therefore i have asked the question of sustainability whether we can sustain 
and if we sustain then how many years whether your kids you are sitting here enjoying this environment whether your kids will be in position to see this thing see this day that they can gather together get together and enjoy this kind of environment no because every child which is born today is born with a 1 lakh rupee loan per child so that you have to see whether that loan you have to take or you don't have to take the loan thank you thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir now we have mr atul vashishta from jindal steel and power limited to kindly present the memento and the bouquet to mr h k raghu thank you so much sir 